In this video, we're going to take a look at all the accessories currently available for the Blickman G4 Furminator. There is a ton to cover, so I'm not going to waste any time. Let's just jump right into it. The first accessory that I want to talk about that I actually kind of talked about in my last video, my initial review of the unit, was the leg extensions. And those are very nice because of the fact that it raises it up, allows for easier cleaning, allows for gravity transfer into a keg if you want to do that, if you're not using pressure. So what the kit comes with for that is pretty basic. It's three legs and a triangular piece of stainless steel. And basically it just installs where the feet go normally on the fermenter. So you just unscrew the feet, screw those legs on, and then you put the triangle piece of stainless steel on the bottom of the legs to just give it some stability and everything and, and make sure that the legs aren't, you know, kind of wonky or spread out because you got a lot of leverage when you get that length of leg on there. That does raise the fermenter by about 20 inches. It's just, just shy of 20 inches, so you can you can count on an additional 20 inches of height on the fermenter. The next accessory that I got was the caster kit and that installs in the same position as the legs basically. Um, one of the nice things about the caster kit is that the legs are the, the um, I guess it's kind of a Y-shaped bracket that the casters connect to. That actually increases the stance or the width of the stance so that when you have it full or whenever you're moving it around, it has a little bit of a wider base so that it doesn't want to tip over. Pretty simple to install that. I installed it after I installed the leg extensions. It goes in the bottom of the leg extension just like it would if you didn't have the extensions. Um, it's got nice locking casters on it, three of those with nice sturdy rubber wheels. Pretty simple to install. Like I said, you just bolt it on and then you have to bolt the casters to the base of that. I did use the triangular piece kind of as a shelf on the bottom there. You don't have to with the caster kit, but I had it, so I thought I might as well go ahead and put it on. That way I could set a keg or something like that. Now, as far as how it rolled around with the casters and everything like that, once it was when it was empty, it seemed like it might be kind of a little bit top heavy and maybe want to tip over. But once I got like 11 gallons of water in there and I did my testing with water, once I got the 11 gallons in there, it definitely seemed a lot more sturdy and less top heavy, if, if that makes any sense. But one of the things I would definitely do, I wouldn't, you know, go shoving it across the, the room or something like that when it's full. All right, the next accessory that I got for it is the air stone or the, it's actually either an oxygenation stone or a carbonation stone, one of the two. Um, really nice, large stone and the whole thing disassembles. The air stone actually unscrews. The It has a ball lock fitting on it that actually unscrews. And it's got a you know several different components to it. It does mount to a tri clamp, and it's it's just it's a it's a very nice large unit. I'm going to go through kind of all these things, and then I'm actually going to show you some performance on all this stuff. The things that have measurable performance towards the end of the video, I'll kind of wrap it up with that. All right, and the other accessory kit that like probably everybody has been waiting for is the cooling kit, and the cooling kit consists of a neoprene jacket that goes on to the fermenter and it's pretty simple with that you just slide it up over the legs on the fermenter and then it's got velcro latches or velcro patches panels that you can uh, apply you know put together in the handle areas and uh, so that's that and then it comes with what are you doing what I'm just practicing for some tasty trombone licks later, man. Why are you trying to cramp my style? I told you it's trombone-like. It's not a trombone, it's trombone-like, okay? All right. Give me that. All right, now that I've got that away from him, jeez. Um, so one of the other things it does come with is the trombone style coil and more on the performance of this here in just a little bit. One of the things I do like about this is that it's going to be really simple to clean as far as the cleaning of it goes. And then if you notice, the opening is offset or the, the cooler is actually offset from the opening. So if you put some kind of a hop dropper or something like that on here, it's going to drop the hops down, not get them kind of all you know tangled up or whatever in here in this area. So it comes with this. Then it also comes with a length of tubing. It comes with the Blickman temperature controller, a pump for the liquid you're going to pump either through a, from a glycol chiller or just like a ice chest or whatever. It also comes with a hose barb for the pump. 
Comes with a couple of clamps, actually three clamps, and two of the Blickman Quick Connect elbows for connecting the chilling lines to the trombone coil. It also comes with a nice long thermowell. The thermowell actually reaches just about almost to the exact middle of the fermenter. So you can kind of, you can move your sensor, temperature sensor in and out to measure either in the very center or kind of towards the outside during your fermentation if you want to take different readings or whatever. Now, as far as setting up the cooling coil, basically it's just as simple as hooking up the two elbow Blickman Quick Connects, hook up the tubing to that, and then you're gonna run the tube, one side of the tubing with the clamp down to the pump, and then the other one is just gonna go into whatever your reservoir is. You're gonna use the, the power supply for the pump plugged into the Blickman controller, plugged into whatever power source wall, or in my case, it would be the, the Blickman uh, chiller. So that's how you do that. It's nice, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And then you're going to insert your um, your probe into the into the thermal well. And last but not least is the sight glass. Probably one of the most controversial things that I saw comments about whenever they introduced this fermenter. Um, it comes with a couple of ferrules uh, that have a hose barb on them. Comes with a piece of like polycarbonate tubing that has gradation marks on it. And then it also comes with a piece of uh, tubing, like some poly tubing, that connects from the top to the bottom. Pretty simple to install that. You just install it basically between the aseptic valve and the rotating dip tube. And then also at the top in the uh, top of the fermenter, you'll install it in between basically either the airlock or your pressure spunding valve. Whatever, whatever you're using at the top, it's going to basically install up there. And it's got a couple hose clamps with it, not a big deal. And then also a couple clamps that clamp it to the leg. Installation on it is pretty simple as well. You just install the clamps on the leg. Then I slide the polycarbonate um, tube in there. And then for the calibration or setting it up on the 14 gallon fermenter, you go two and an eighth inches from the lid, the lip of the lid down to the first or the last mark on the polycarbonate tube and then on the seven gallon i believe it's two inches so it's, it's pretty it's pretty close on both of them but it's two and an eighth on the 14 gallon and then two inches on the other now some of the controversy about this is light strike and everything but you know that nothing flows through this sight glass it is kind of nice to have it on the exterior quite honestly because you know all the other manufacturers if they have measurements they're usually on the inside which you can't see when you put the lid and everything on anyway so i mean it's it's almost pointless unless you're filling it up and you just want to see what your volume is with the lid open but usually i fill up these type of fermenters with the lid and everything in place so that i can just cap it and go so it's nice to have that and then it's also nice to be able to use that device whenever you're filling up your kegs or whatever so you can tell how much you've dispensed and then how much is left in the fermenter for you know the next keg Let's talk about the performance of some of these accessories. Uh, the air stone, which is you know either a carbonation or oxygenation stone, worked very well. I've got some footage here of putting about probably two or three psi into the stone with my CO2 tank, and I mean it really, it really you know it definitely you know creates a nice fine bubble. Um, the nice thing about the way it mounts, it's in it's out in the fermenter, so it doesn't have to come out of a tube. A lot of times when you have air stones in a tube like that, the bubbles will collect together and come out as a large bubble. Whereas the way they have it mounted in this one, the air stone is actually out in the fermenter. So it's, it's dispersing all the bubbles everywhere, whether it be oxygen or CO2, whichever. Now the cooling coil, that thing, I mean, it chilled down probably within a couple of hours. It took it from like 70 degrees down to about 40 degrees. And then that's kind of where I ran into a little bit of a, an issue. Um, not an issue, I guess, but just um, something that kind of perplexed me. I was getting it down to like 39 or 38 or 39 degrees and I couldn't get it to go any lower. I reached out to one of the engineers over at Blickman and he said, well, why don't you open it up and uh, see what's going on inside? So I opened it up and literally there was a block of ice. I mean, probably this big. I couldn't even pull this out of the fermenter. It was so big. Now, I don't know if that has a lot to do with it being water, but he did tell me that a lot of people in error set their glycol chiller way too cold and what happens is it forms ice and i've seen some of that discussion i'm by no means a pro when it comes to glycol chilling and stuff so i'm still learning this myself but what he told me was that the optimal temperature for your chiller to be set at is like 28 to 29 degrees and then basically that will transmit as much of the cooling power as it possibly can to the fermenter 
and not freeze up your coils because even at, with water, and I think water probably has a little bit to do with this, but even at like 29 or 29, 28 or 29 degrees, I was still getting a nice thin coat of ice on the coil itself. So I think probably if you're doing cold crashing on a beer that has some alcohol present, it might help mitigate that a little bit. But I think this, I, I really think that this thing will get down to probably 36, 37 degrees in a cold crash situation with fermented wort that actually has alcohol in it. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I, I didn't have any huge performance issues with it other than, you know, freezing up, which, I mean, that just means basically that it's, it's getting as cold as it can possibly get. And you're kind of limited by the thermodynamics of whatever liquid it is that's in there, whether or not it's going to chill down all the way. So I think once I use it on a, on a beer, I'll know a little bit more about that, but just with water, I got it down to about 38 degrees. So just for those that are wondering, but it did get there extremely fast. I mean, I was kind of monitoring it and it was like a couple hours. It was down to like 40 degrees. So it, it definitely is highly effective, maybe too effective. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's, uh, it definitely works. The sight glass, I mean, it is what it is. As far as the performance of it goes, I had no problem, you know, installing it and doing the calibration and everything. I didn't test to see if that two and an eighth inch was exactly hundred percent correct by weighing water and all that stuff but to me it's it's going to be close enough I, I you know i gotta think it's it that's very very close the only other accessory that i really didn't cover in this video would be the spunding valve which kind of which i kind of covered in the previous first ferment video so you know if you, if you want information for that i'll put a card up here for you to go take a look at the review on that i like all the accessories that they sent over um, you know, the airstone is nice. I think it'll work great for carbonation in, in the actual fermenter. I think it'll work great for, for oxygenation. I like the caster kit. I like the leg extensions. I mean, it really raises everything up. Um, the cooling, the trombone cooling coil, I think works very well. I mean, it's going to work really good for, for uh, ale temperatures. And I think it'll work, it'll work fine for, for loggers as well. Um, didn't have any issues with that. And it actually didn't cycle the chiller very much whenever I had it on that 28, 29 degrees, which is kind of the optimal temperature according to what they're telling me. So, you know, I, I can't say that I found anything wrong with any of the accessories, quite honestly. So let me know in the comments down below, which accessory you're most interested in and you know, which one would you, which one, which one would you buy first for this fermenter? This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We'll see you on the next video.